Hello friends, uh, we will look at the next strengthening mechanism now uh, and this strengthening mechanism is uh, uh, on grain boundary depending upon grain boundaries and one of the very famous relationship uh, is there to explain the grain boundary strengthening okay? and that is grain boundary means grain size strengthening. So, and that is called hall pitch relationship. So, basically when you apply the shear stress okay so maybe there will be some source here okay and the source is emitting the dislocations okay when you are applying a shear stress like this and this dislocation will move okay and when they see a barrier a grain boundary is a very strong barrier okay the reason is that suppose my dislocation is moving on a crystallographic plane like this Okay, in the next grain, okay, suppose this is the next grain, so this is my next grain boundary. Now, in the next grain boundary, as I already told you, that the grains are basically the difference between this grain and the next grain uh, uh, close to it is that there will be a change in the orientation. So, in the next grain, maybe this particular plane is oriented in some other fashion, for example, like this. Okay. So, now the dislocation when it is moving in this plane, it cannot just start moving in the uh, in, uh, another orientation. Okay. So, a uh, grain boundary is a very strong barrier. So, what will happen is that that dislocation will pile up okay, because of this grain boundary and the so first dislocation will be there because of the strain field associated with this. Uh, we have already discussed th that, that you will have a compressive strain field here and tensile here. So, this is compressive tensile. So, if the same type of dislocation goes, okay, same type of edge dislocation uh, with the same sign, okay, so extra half plane on the upper part. Again in this case also you will have a tensile and compressive field. So, now this compressive and tensile field of both the dislocations are interacting. So, and of course, uh, a compressive will uh, repel the other compressive field. Say similarly, a tensile field repel the other tensile field. Okay, so this will repel this, and combined these two, this dislocation will see uh, uh, again now the combined strain field of the these two dislocation. So for this dislocation, because it sees the a combined strain field the distance has now increased between the these two dislocation as compared to these two. Okay. So, slowly you will see the pile up is there, but uh, slowly you will also see that the dislocation will stop much before the, uh, the other dislocations. Okay. So, for example, this for this particular dislocation, okay, now it sees the strain field of all the three dislocations together. So, because it sees a, a, a larger strain field, it will stop much before the, the pile up. Okay. So, this is how the dislocations uh, are kind of gets arranged. So, this is what uh, we are writing here that first dislocation is stopped by grain boundary, each dislocation will apply a back stress, okay. stop other dislocation to move in the same slip plane. Okay. And then there is a very nice uh, uh, transmission electron micrograph TEM. Okay. Uh, and you can see that these are the dislocations. So, these are all dislocations, so, these are all the dislocations okay. and how they are and this is my grain boundary. Okay. So, they are getting arranged and also they are kind of uh, initiating the dislocation in other, other in the next grain close to each, close to that and the arrow indicates the movement of the dislocation. Okay, a very nice uh, micrograph uh, taken from this particular website. Okay. So, this is how the dislocations will go uh, and uh, get uh, uh, stopped by the grain boundary. Okay. So, that is why how, how the grain boundary strengthen the material. So, single crystal can deform on a single slip system which is given by Schmidt factor. Individual grains in polycrystal experience constraint due to continuity which needs to be maintained between the two grains. Okay. Now, how the grain boundary and deformation are uh, connected to each other. Okay. So, if I have a single crystal and uh, dislocation is moving, okay. so because uh, the, the single crystal will only have free surface, the dislocation will go and create a step at the free surface. 
Now, when you have polycrystalline material, okay, so basically you have, uh, let us say, take the simple example of hexagonal grains here, okay. So, this is how the grains will be arranged close to each other, okay. So, now if I deform this grain, okay, suppose it becomes elongated, it goes in this direction, suppose the deformation I am applying like this, okay or uh, in terms of shear stress maybe it will it will uh, shear in this direction so you will create a step in this direction so uh, uh, because after deformation i am not going to see any cavities in the material it is going to be a continuous uh, uh, arrangement okay so that means that there has to be some uh, constraint which has to be applied to maintain the continuity between this grain and this grain Okay, because this grain will be deforming according to the Schmidt factor. If we take example of single crystal, uh, if we consider each one of them a single crystal, it will deform according to where the Schmidt factor was maximum. So, maybe in this case it is for these planes, in this case maybe for the it is for these planes. Okay. In another case it is maybe for these planes. So, the deformation will be in different direction. But still they have to maintain a continuity across the grain boundary so that you do not form any cavities. Okay, so, that kind of impose a additional constraint on the deformation when we talk about a polycrystalline material. So, multiple system slip system are active due to this constraint. So, so what happens is that uh, instead uh, what we have seen in the single crystal that you have only one slip system satisfying the Schmidt factor maximum Schmidt factor condition. So, that will deform in polycrystalline material actually you will have multiple slip system activated to maintain this continuity or to, uh, to satisfy this constraint. Okay. And how many active slip system will be there? Okay. According to again uh, a Taylor criterion is there which says that there has to be 5 independent slip system are required to maintain this continuity or to or to satisfy this constraint okay and if you don't have this five independent slip system then the ductility of the material will come down okay and that is why the fcc materials are very ductile because they have 12 independent slip systems okay and you just need five uh, independent slip systems in BCC, FCC, BCC of course does not have any slip system which satisfy the close peg condition, but at least it has more slip system than HCP which has uh, again 12, but out of those 12 only 3 satisfy the close peg condition, other uh, 9 does not satisfy that. Okay. So, that is why FCC is very highly ductile, BCC comes in between the FCC and HCP. HCP is uh, uh, least ductile of these three uh, crystal structures. Okay. So, to maintain this continuity as I was just discussing, so you have a polycrystalline material like this. Okay. So, if I uh, allow these each of these grains to deform independently, so there is no constraint, okay. what will happen that this will want to deform in whatever manner it will go uh, it will go in this direction the uh, this one would like to go in this direction uh, some some other grain will like to go in any direction so what will happen is you will have some in some cases you will have overlap okay and in some cases you will form the voids because each one of them is independent to deform okay so for some grain maybe it would like to go in this direction so there will be an overlap here Okay, so, let us say there will be an overlap here, this one want to go in this direction, so there may be a void here, in this case I have an overlap. Okay. So, all these uh, differences will be there, okay. so sometime you will have a void formation is there, in some cases the overlap formation is there. So, what will happen is locally to maintain this uh, constraint, there will be some dislocation only to maintain the continuity. Okay. So, one dislo uh, there will be two type of dislocations now, one which is required for the deformation as in single crystal. So, for a given deformation okay, to maintain the deformation, what dislocations I need. Okay that I can get easily. 
The other is geometrically necessary dislocations, this is, these are generated as a result of non-uniform strain in the crystal. At some places you will have overlap, at some places you will have void formation. So, to maintain this geometry, okay, so this geometrical constraint that they, it cannot have overlap, it cannot have void. Okay, so, to maintain that geometry, okay, additionally now the, there will be some dislocation to fill this void, there will be some dislocation to uh, remove this overlap. Okay, so, these are the additional dislocations which are present in the material and these are called geometrically necessary dislocations. And statistically stored dislocations are the dislocation which are required to do that deformation. So, if we look at strengthening from grain boundary, okay, uh, you can uh, give a, a relationship similar to what we saw, saw in the single crystal. Okay, the tau is equal to sigma cos phi cos lambda okay, and this cos phi cos lambda you can replace by sigma by m okay, where m we are saying is an orientation factor which varies from one grain to another and this is the inverse of a Schmidt factor. Okay. And for polycrystal an average m can be estimated it is around 3.1 for FCC lattice. So, for BCC it will be a different number, for HCP it will be a different number. Okay, so, you can give that what will be the increase in the strengthening due to grain boundary if I know this uh, this aim the Taylor factor okay, for a polycrystal. Now, coming to the Hall Pitch relationship, okay, uh, and Hall Pitch relationship says that sigma naught okay, or uh, you can say sigma y also okay, that is equal to yield stress depends on the sigma i friction stress. Friction stress is nothing but for example, when I have an atomic arrangement and I have to move the dislocation. Okay, so, from uh, for the movement of the dislocation I there is kind of a friction uh, imposed by the lattice. Okay. So, that that friction stress is always going to be there. Okay. It is just like that you have a uh, car okay, uh, just for moving the car, I need a certain kind of force on the car okay, to uh, overcome the friction between the tyre and the road. Okay. A minimum power I will always require for movement of the car. The remaining power which you are going to give is going to give the velocity to the car, okay. but uh, one minimum stress or one minimum force will always be required just to overcome the friction between the tyre and the road. Okay, so, that is this friction stress, k is a some locking parameter okay, and d is your grain diameter okay, and uh, to the power uh, half uh, minus half. Okay. So, basically d is in the denominator here and with a, uh, a square root. Okay. So, I, in another way I can write it like this, okay, so it is like this. So, if I reduce the grain size that means I am increasing the grain boundaries, okay. then my yield stress will increase. Okay. So, a finer grain size will have higher yield stress, a coarse grain will have lower yield stress. So, that is what is the grain boundary strengthening or grain size strengthening and the relation this particular relationship is called Hall Pitch relationship given by two scientists uh, on their name this is uh, known as uh, Hall Pitch relationship. Okay, so, again it is based on dislocation pile up model only, okay. a source of dislocation within the grain sends dislocation to pile up. The stress at leading end of pile up should exceed some critical shear stress to continuously pass grain boundary barrier. Okay. So, uh, this pile up should uh, in, in, uh, impose a stress on the next grain to in, in, initiate the or to continue the slip process across the grain boundary. So, this is based on that idea. Okay. So, if we see that uh, uh, how I can just uh, rationalize the, the relationship here. Okay. So, already we have discussed that yield strength increases as a function of dislocation density. Okay. When we were discussing work hardening also we said that uh, when the dislocation density is going to be high it will have higher yield stress. Okay. So, sigma y uh, equal to sigma i plus uh, a relationship like this alpha g b rho to the power half rho is your dislocation density. Okay. 
and uh, of course g is your shear modulus b is your burgers vector and alpha is some constant here okay so my yield stress always depend on the dislocation density now when you are deforming and there is a barrier the dislocation density will increase in the grain and uh, since my dislocation cannot cross the grain okay or cannot cross the grain boundary the pile up will be remain within the within the grain so as the dislocation density is increasing my yield stress should increase okay so dislocation density will depend upon the diameter with this relationship so if i have a smaller diameter there will be more dislocation pile up isn't it if i have a bigger grain uh, my dislocation density will be less so it will have a inverse relationship so i will replace rho with 1 by d here so it will become sigma y is equal to sigma i plus alpha g b d to the power minus a half now okay and uh, i will replace this with a constant k which is called locking parameter and this is how i will i am going to write this so sigma y is my shear yield stress sigma i is my friction stress so earlier i think i have used a sigma not so let's make this as also y instead of not okay just to remove the confusion so sigma of i is the friction stress let is resistance to dislocation movement rho is dislocation density k locking parameter which measures the relative hardening contribution of the grain boundaries and d is your grain diameter okay so the strength of the material depends on the uh, grain size okay and the strengthening is coming because of the grain boundary because grain boundary act as a barrier to dislocation movement okay then there are large number of experiments people have done okay so you can see that uh, large number of uh, materials are written here 304 stainless steel brass copper Uh, some 0.05 carbon steel 0.09 carbon steel and so on some nickel molybdenum and aluminum and you can see that they have plotted uh, this curves uh, with x axis as d to the power minus half and y axis as the yield stress okay so uh, of course it, it if i replace this with x okay so this is k plus this is some constant sigma i and this is my y okay so it is a y is equal to mx plus c kind of equation a straight line equation if i directly plot plot the d to the power minus half if i plot d then of course the slope will be different it will not be a linear curve then okay so because i have plotted directly the d minus half as x i can get a straight line here okay so if i see here now of course the slope will be different for different materials okay so their locking parameters are different okay and of course the the sigma i will be the intercept so where it is cutting the y axis okay so friction stress will also be different depending upon the bond energy between the atoms in that particular material okay so of course you will have different slope and different intercepts but the important thing is that when you plot d to the power minus half as a function of yield stress they will all give you a straight line okay that and that is that was a kind of a empirical relationship uh, taken from some ideas of uh, pile up okay and this is a experimental result which uh, kind of validate that whatever analysis we have done there uh, is uh, going to be is true and that is what you find out in the uh, in the material of course uh, uh, to have a grain size strengthening okay uh, you have to have the grain size maybe in the range of let's say less than 10 micron okay so any size more than this okay you will not see the effect of the uh, uh, grain size on the yield stress okay Uh, for very coarse grain let's say 100 micron or let's say 500 micron okay for very coarse grain material if you want to see the effect of grain size reduction it will not be very very clear okay when you start getting the grain size in this range okay then you will start seeing that 
the effect of the grain size on the uh, on the strength okay or if you compare 10 micron with 500 micron and 10 micron with 100 micron you will see the effect maybe 500 to 100 micron if you want to see any effect uh, you may not be able to see any effect of the grain size okay so this is your grain size uh, strengthening okay thank you